Almost all American journalism is controlled by a few massive corporations. News Voice is a one of a kind mobile app that tracks the bias and corporate interests that infuse the news stories we consume every day, and it's completely free to use. Go to newsvoice.com slash Pacman to download it. So you have to see this video to believe it. Sean Hannity from Fox News is promoting a pepper spray and tear gas gun on his live nightly television program here in the United States. If you don't know, we have a propaganda news channel called Fox News. And with some rare exceptions, Fox News basically carries water for Republicans and significantly carries water for Donald Trump. Yesterday, Sean Hannity promoted a projectile gun powered by CO2 cartridges which shoots balls of pepper spray and tear gas. Now, this is considered a chemical weapon that is banned in international warfare. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Check out the video from Sean Hannity's program. Lethal methods that the police could do. Take a look at your screen. Look at that. By the way, no financial interest in burn a gun, but I purchased a number of them. Yes, full price I paid. Now, I met with them they, and I purchased a number of their items. Now, again, this is a, an alternative. It won't kill people. Non-lethal defense. Non-lethal. It shoots small projectiles filled with pepper spray and tear gas. And by the way, unlike these stun guns, which have an incredibly short range and those stupid wires, this weapon's accurate up to 50 feet. Why? Because I own one. And they even come equipped with lasers, so you can't really miss for accuracy. Now, we didn't show the video I wanted to. We'll get it up later in the show where it actually will play for you what happens when, it, when somebody gets hit with it. They don't die. And it say it could hopefully be an alternative in a very volatile, dangerous situation. Whatever new technology we can develop. Now, according to report, I like how Hannity clarifies that he doesn't have an investment in the manufacturer Berna, which would be the natural thing we would imagine because it sounds and looks like an infomercial happening in the middle of his program. It sort of sounds like the context is he's trying to propose ways that police could deal with protesters to avoid hurting them or maybe for police to deal with encounters like the George Floyd encounter. So I played this for you for two different reasons. First, the visual of it is crazy. It looks like an infomercial. Hannity is promoting specific weapons on his program, which is a wild thing for uh, news programs to be doing. He's also spreading misinformation. Hannity's promoting this like it's a paintball gun, which, by the way, if you get hit in the eye with a paintball gun, it can still do damage. But if you get hit in the eye, with a pepper spray or tear gas ball, you could not only lose the eye, there can be very serious reactions to pepper spray and tear gas. Even on the basic facts, Sean Hannity is acting like this is like a harmless tool when it is not at all harmless. There are international case reports of tear gas causing death through eventual respiratory failure, and there's other just horrifying examples. And in the context of coronavirus, one of the things you're not supposed to do is touch your eyes and you, you want to try to avoid coughing and sneezing on other people. When you deploy tear gas and pepper spray in large crowds, people immediately start rubbing their eyes, coughing, sneezing onto the people next to them. So this is a bad idea in general. It's a particularly bad, bad idea now with coronavirus and in studies done on members of the military where very often they will be exposed to tear gas uh, as part of their training. It increases your risk of contracting the flu, pneumonia, bronchitis and other respiratory illnesses. So this is not without consequence, as Hannity is trying to argue. Next, tear gas is considered a chemical weapon and it's banned in war uh, dating back to 1993. Now, you might say, OK, it might be banned internationally, but the United States isn't part of that. Uh, yes, it is. The United States ratified the ban on these tools, weapons um, in 1997. But domestically, tear gas, instead of being considered a banned chemical weapon, is considered an approved riot control agent and it's permitted for law enforcement use. It is actually so common in the United States that people may not realize tear gas is banned in international warfare. And we have American law enforcement using it for crowd control and compliance during domestic protests, which are protected by the First Amendment, banned on the battlefield used regularly in American cities. So that's layer one and layer two. Now the deeper uh, issue here, Hannity, like many people on the right, comes at all of these issues 
with the attitude of what gun or weapon or aggressive tactic could we introduce into a situation that's already volatile? That's how they approach these issues. They never go to how could we deescalate a situation to prevent officers from even needing or believing that they need tear gas guns to begin with. This is the problem. And uh, when when police bring out tear gas into a chaotic situation, it creates more chaos and the protests become more chaotic and it leads to even harsher reactions from police. This is a completely optional self reinforcing feedback loop. The deescalation tactics like, you know, transparent communication, empathy, negotiation. Uh, we've seen examples of all of this stuff. That's how you stop the cycle of escalation. Instead, Sean Hannity is talking about here's a tear gas gun you could use. And apparently it's within law enforcement big picture to understand that the priority should rather than being better armed with riot shields and nightsticks should be de-escalation tactics. And this is a big part of the police reform that I've been outlining over the last few days on the show.